Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Attorney Job Vlogger, Law for the Everyday Layman. Today we take up a new topic, namely the law on sales. And we'll be talking about the nature, the kinds, and the distinctions between sales and other similar contracts, okay? So if you like my videos and you want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. Also, please remember that this is only for educational purposes and is not a substitute for proper legal advice or for studying and understanding the law. Okay, so what's a contract of sale? The law says that by a contract of sale, one of the parties, namely the seller, binds himself to deliver and to transfer ownership of a determinate thing, while the other, known as the buyer, should pay a price certain in money or its equivalent. Okay, so a contract of sale is a consensual contract because it is perfected by mere consent. In other words, it is perfected at the moment the minds of the parties is meet upon the object which must be a determinate or determinable thing and upon a price which must be certain and be in money or its equivalent. A sale is also a bilateral contract or a reciprocal obligation in that it imposes obligations on both of the parties. Okay, Sale is also an onerous contract because it is for a valuable consideration. Sales is also commutative in that the thing is equivalent to the value of the money or the price. Okay? Sale is a nominate contract because the law gives it a specific or particular name. And finally, sale is a principal contract because it does not need any other contract for it to stand alone or to exist. Okay? Now, this is very important. Sale is a title and not a mode. Okay? Sale is a title and what is a title? It is the legal basis by which ownership is affected. In other words, the sale by itself does not transfer ownership. Okay? The most that the sale can do is to create the obligation to transfer ownership. In other words, it is not a mode because a mode is the legal means by which ownership is either created, transferred, or destroyed. Okay, and under the law, there are seven modes of acquisition of ownership, namely occupation, law, donation, tradition or delivery, intellectual creation, prescription, and succession. Okay, now we're not going to discuss those here because that is more appropriate to the law on property. Okay, and it's uh, good for a different discussion. Okay, so what mode do we use there in those seven? We use tradition or delivery here in sale no sale is the title in which uh, which is the basis to affect ownership but the mode of transferring ownership is tradition or delivery okay so sale is a title and the mode is tradition or delivery okay so there are uh, two kinds of sales we have the absolute sale and the conditional sale an absolute sale is simple it's not subject to any condition and follows the general rule that ownership or title is transferred or passes upon delivery okay whether actual or constructive We'll talk about actual and constructive delivery in a different video, okay? But for now, even if the contract of sale is perfected by mere consent, ownership is only transferred upon delivery, okay? Now, uh, we talk about the conditional sale. A conditional sale is one where ownership is not transferred until the condition is fulfilled. Okay? Please just take note on my uh, of the definition of condition. You can learn more about that if you watch my uh, episode on pure and conditional obligations. Okay? But uh, how will we know if a sale is an absolute sale or a conditional sale? The test is simple, no? If the condition is uh, imposed upon the obligation of the seller to transfer ownership, then it's a conditional sale, meaning that ownership will not be transferred until the happening of the condition. That's a conditional sale. Okay? But if the condition is simply imposed upon the payment of the price, then that's an absolute sale. The contract of sale is already perfected. Why? Because payment and any condition imposed upon payment is part of the consummation stage of the 
contract of sale, okay? In other words, since it's in the consummation or performance, there is already a perfected contract. The contract of sale already exists. Okay, so again, if the condition is imposed upon the obligation of the seller to transfer ownership, then that is a conditional sale. Okay, in fact, the law says, the law allows the parties to stipulate that ownership shall not pass to the buyer until the price is fully paid. And this is uh, what leads us to our next topic, no? the contract to sell okay this is also a very important topic the contract to sell no and what is a contract to sell it's a species of conditional sales okay it is a bilateral contract where the ownership or title to the thing is retained by the seller okay ownership is still with the seller despite delivery to the buyer the thing is already with the buyer okay until fulfillment of a positive suspensive condition usually the full payment of the purchase price okay let's distinguish an absolute sale from a contract to sell no in a sale no in an absolute sale the perfection of the contract results in the reciprocal obligations of the seller having to deliver the thing and the buyer having to pay the price but in a contract to uh, sell no this own the perfection of this contract to sell only results in a reciprocal reciprocal suspensive condition which creates the obligation to deliver on the part of the seller only if the buyer fully pays the price or other condition is fulfilled okay in case of a sale the title passes right away upon delivery while in a contract to sell that the thing is uh, the thing may be in the possession of the buyer but the title and the ownership is reserved with the seller and will only pass to the buyer upon full payment by the buyer okay or fulfillment of whatever else condition okay and in case of a contract of sale in case there is failure to pay the purchase price this only results in a breach of the obligation which gives rise to the remedies of either specific performance or rescission with damages in either case but in a contract to sell the effect of failure to uh, pay the full payment is that it just prevents the obligation of the seller to deliver from coming into existence in other words the obligation of the seller doesn't exist no he does not have to deliver ownership anymore okay and the remedy of the seller in this case is merely an action to recover possession of the property okay so again a contract to sell is a species of conditional sales it is subject to the condition that uh, must be fulfilled okay in order for it to give rise to an absolute contract of sale okay now let's distinguish sales from uh, other different but similar uh, arrangements no let's first take up agency to sell no a contract of sale is different from an agency to sell if you have taken up agency that's good but uh, for uh, purposes of those who do not know what agency is, by the contract of agency, one person binds himself to, to do something or render some service on behalf of or in representation of another with the consent or authority of the latter. Okay? It, uh, it means that uh, the agent is an extension of the principal and he can perform acts which bind the principal in case he acts within the scope of his authority. Okay? Now, a sale is different from agency agency to sell no because in a contract of sale if the buyer pays the price then he becomes the owner okay but in an agency to sell the agent receives the price and he has to give it to the principal no when the principal until the delivery of the price still remains to be the owner ownership does not go to the agent okay in a contract of sale sale no the buyer cannot generally return the thing after consummation of the 
the contract, no? But in an agency to sell, in case the agent is unable to sell the things, he may return the things to the principal. In a contract of sale, the seller warrants the thing, no? There are several warranties which we will talk about in uh, succeeding videos, no? But in an agency to sell, there is no warranty on the part of the agent. Okay? In a sale, it cannot generally be unilaterally revoked. But in uh, an agency to sell, the principal may uh, unilaterally revoke the arrangement because it is a fiduciary relationship which is founded upon trust. Okay? In a contract of sale, uh, the effect of uh, paying the purchase price is that the buyer becomes the owner and he can exercise the attributes of ownership such as the right to destroy, the right to dispose, the right to uh, the fruits, etc. No? But in an agency to sell, the agent must act according to the instructions of the principal. Okay? A sale, a contract of sale is also different from a donation. And this one is just simple, no? While sale in, is an onerous contract and involves a valuable consideration, donation does not, okay? There is no valuable consideration because the consideration in donation is, it is the pure liberality of the donor because this is a gratuitous contract, no? Sale is different. Is uh, well, sale is the law that governs dation and pago or dation in payment. Okay, but there are some differences. Okay, even though dation in payment is governed by the law on sales, a contract of sale does not involve any pre-existing obligation, but a dation in payment involves a pre-existing obligation which will be extinguished by virtue of the dation. Whereas in a contract of sale obligations are created no dation obligations are extinguished and in sale obligations are created namely the obligation of the seller to deliver and obligation of the buyer to pay no also in a contract of sale the cost for uh, the the buyer is to uh, achieve or acquire the thing and the cost for the seller is to obtain the price while the cost in dation is simply for the extinguishment of the obligation on the part of the debtor and finally in a contract of sale there is much more freedom to determine the price while in dation there is less freedom because it serves the thing uh, paid in dation in payment is uh, meant to extinguish the pre-existing obligation of the debtor okay now a contract of sale is also different from a contract of lease. Why? Because in a lease, there is no transfer of ownership. You are merely leasing the property. Okay? Lease is more or less a temporary arrangement while sale is more permanent in character. Okay? Lease, in, uh, in a contract of lease, the lessor need not be the owner. While in a contract of sale, the, the seller must only have a right to transfer ownership at the time of delivery. Okay? And finally, in case of a contract of lease, the money here is rent. While in a sale, the money here is the price. Okay? Now, let's go to a more important topic. Okay? This contract for a piece of work. Okay? As a general rule, while services may be the proper object of a contract per se, services are not a proper subject for a contract of sale. Why? Because contract of sales involve determinate things, okay? And the rule that will govern in case of contracts for piece of work would be the Massachusetts rule. We follow the Massachusetts rule here in the Philippines. And what does the Massachusetts rule say? And then the goods that are manufactured specially upon the special order of the buyer and not for the general market would be a contract for a piece of work. Okay? Again, special order and specially for the buyer, not for the general market. That is a contract for a piece of work. There are many exam questions on this topic. Huh? And I'll just give you one example. Let's say Nike, the shoe company, makes several kinds of shoes. No, Let's say uh, whatever shoe, no, X model kind of shoes. It makes that kind of model, no? 
And here comes Shaquille O'Neal, this big basketball player, no? Whose shoe size is 22, okay? Generally, Nike does not make size 22 shoes because there are not many people with size 22 feet. So, in case Shaq goes to Nike and asks Nike to make a pair of shoes for him, even though Nike makes that uh, mo X model kind of shoes for the general market, if Nike makes that size 22 shoe for Shaq alone, because of Shaq's special order, then that is a contract for a piece of work, okay? And the laws will be different, no? The laws of sale do not necessarily apply to a contract for a piece of work, okay? The test here is that if the thing is not in existence or never would have existed had it not been for the special order of that buyer, Okay, if Nike would never have made those size 22 pair of shoes uh, if not for the special order of Shaquille O'Neal, okay? Next, let's talk about barter, okay? According to the law, by a contract of barter, one of the parties binds himself to give a thing in consideration of the other's promise to give another thing, okay? So it's thing for thing, okay? But... Okay? If the consideration of the contract is partly in money or partly in another thing, then there are certain rules. Okay? First rule is that if uh, it's partly in one thing and partly in money, then the transaction will be characterized by the manifest intention of the parties. Okay? What they had intended. For instance, X obligates himself to deliver uh, 100 bottles of water. Okay, worth 10,000 pesos. And Y obligates himself to deliver uh, uh, sugar worth uh, 10,000 pesos also. No, they're both worth 10,000. If uh, bottles of water for sugar, then that's barter. Okay, because thing for thing, no problem. Okay, the problem now comes in case X delivers uh, water plus cash. Okay? Or in case there, when uh, X was about to fulfill his obligation of delivering uh, 100 bottles of uh, water but it so happens that he ran out of stock then he gave 10,000 pesos the contract will be barter why? because it was the intention of the parties that they would trade a thing for another thing Okay? So, first rule is we follow the intent of the parties. But if we cannot discern the intent or in case of doubt, then the next two rules will govern. Okay? The contract will be a barter if the value of the thing exceeds, is more than the amount of money or its equivalent which is given. For instance, in case again of that example of uh, 100 bottles of wat water at 10,000 pesos and sugar worth 10,000 pesos. No? In case X delivers 75 bottles of water plus 2,500 pesos, then the value of the bottles of water is higher than the money you know the 2.5 the 2500 pesos he delivered okay in which case the contract will be considered a barter but again that rule will only apply if there is no intent if, if there is doubt as to the intention of the parties Okay? Now, second rule, in case there is doubt as to the manifest intention of the parties, the contract will be a sale if the value of the thing is equal or less than the amount of money. For example, in the same uh, example I gave earlier, in case X delivers 25 bottles of water plus 7,500 pesos, then the value of the money is higher. In which case, the transaction will now be considered a sale. Okay? So, uh, that's it for the nature of sale, the kinds of sale, and the distinctions between sales and different kinds of contracts. Okay? Please stay tuned for my next video on the elements of a contract of sale. Okay? I hope you may have picked up a thing or two and I hope to see you next time. Bye!